Hello everybody, video here for you today. This is the retro no cap recap of the Curse of Oak Island season seven, episode 14 called Burnt Offering, originally aired February 25th, 2020. If you missed any of my recaps of previous and future episodes, there's a link to my Oak Island playlist in the upper right. Let's get into it. Do, 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 do. Previously, on the Curse of Oak Island, people have been looking for an incredible treasure for 229 years. After having just gotten the carbon dating results from a piece of wood from deep in the money pit, which was 1626 to 1680, the team discusses putting a caisson in that spot. Caissons, or the industry jargon cans, are the wide metal cylinders that are oscillated into the earth to target depth. The Lagina team has been using 60 inch diameter caissons. The most fruitful of these was in borehole H8 that produced spoils that contained pottery shards, pieces of parchment and book binding, and two human bones dated to the 1600s that were of European and Middle Eastern descent, respectively. Laird says it's probably not an archaeological taboo to dig around this box-like structure found in the bump-out area, in line with the previously found slipway and concrete wall. Narrator Robert Clotworthy ponders whether it was an original depositor construction or if it was built by searchers trying to turn off the flood tunnel. The fact that it has no fasteners or nails in it at all would seem to indicate much earlier in time than searchers. Unfortunately, the soil around the structure was holding it together and the side closest to the water collapsed. Rick decides to not dig there any longer and to return the soil on all the sides to make sure the remaining section stays together. Jack points out that the box trains that they were looking for are not in that area. Gary arrives at the swamp to metal detect the spoils from the paved area. First he finds a modern nail, but then this strap or bracket. It reminds Rick of the inge that Gary found the previous season in Smith's Cove that Carmen Legg dated back as far as the 1600s. Laird is called in to render an opinion, says it's old, likely a strap to hold wood together, and suggests that Carmen could shed more light. The rare shot of the episode is Smith's Cove, and it has been drained, and a lot of digging has happened. The team is standing in what is referred to the uplands, the area between Smith's Cove and the cave-in pit. They're looking for evidence of the flood tunnel so that they can block the flow of water to the money pit area, which has thwarted searcher groups since 1802 when the original shaft was flooded after removal of the 90-foot stone. Marty continues to dig and eventually exposes these timbers 15 feet deep. Narrator Robert Clotworthy reminds us that the team had previously recovered wood from 50 feet below the upland surface, and that wood dated to the 1730s. More digging reveals more timbers perpendicular to each other, so definitely placed by a human. Alex points out a cut on one of them. Gary suggests a shaft or tunnel possibly built there by previous searchers trying to cut off the water supply. Operations manager Scott Barlow says the soil is backfill. They will have Rick and Laird come render opinions. Due to finding a square nail that Gary dates to the 1800s, they are thinking it's an undocumented searcher structure. In 1850, the Truro Company built a coffer dam in Smith's Cove and may have traced the flood tunnel to the uplands. More excavating reveals this huge timber. Mm -hmm. 
Marty, Alex, and Gary make the 20-mile trip to New Ross, which means it's Carmen dating time for items found in the swamp. This piece that was thought to be a shovel or a spade is too thin for that, according to Carmen. He says it would be used for covering the inside of a wall or box, anywhere you would use thin plate metal. Carmen dates this pickaxe to the mid to late 1700s and says it could be used for mining, tunneling, or quarry work. He says the strap is roughly nine inches long between the bends and that it is from a sailing ship. It would have been used to hold timbers together. Further, he says that it has been in a hot and sustained fire. When told that they are looking for a ship in the swamp, Carmen says that if you want to hide a ship, you burn it. He dates it 1710 to 1790. For the ending narration, Prometheus updates their animation of a ship being sunk and then covered up, creating a man-made swamp to include the ship being burned first. I'll be continuing Retro No Cap Recaps of Seasons 7 and 8 during the fall. Seasons 1 through 6 and 9 through 11 are already done and are in my Oak Island playlist. Season 12 of The Curse of Oak Island will begin airing November 12th, 2024. And I'll be posting no cap recaps of the new episodes Tuesdays, late nights as they air. I'm also doing retro no cap recaps of Seasons 2 through 4 of The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch. Seasons 1 and 5 are all done and are in the Skinwalker Ranch playlist. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, like, and comment. Hit the notification bell to be alerted to my new posts. Siempre avanti.